I was up early one morning, you know, just looking at a few things. You know, I'm always pondering on the universe. So I went and had some peanut butter cookies in the refrigerator. I wanted to warm them up, and I decided to open the living room blinds. When I opened the living room blinds, I saw a swarm of cops. I mean, I saw them like they was like, like rabbits running in the wild. So I'm like, wow, look at these cops for, for, for a split second. Then I thought about it. Hold it. These people coming at me. I got on a full deck of pajamas, full deck of pajamas. I run to the back to open the slide door. When I run to the back to open the slide door, I ain't even try to grab no shoes or nothing. They was in the back. They was in the backyard, laying back there waiting on me. They arrested me. So we finally got you, blah, blah, blah. They calling me all type of names or whatever. You know, the girl, she come out, she crying. What y'all doing? He ain't did nothing or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, kind of like that or whatever. So they took me to an area where they had a couple more guys lined up at. And uh, that ended up being a, a, another situation that changed my life forever. They put me in inside, right? They, they gave me an astronomical bond so I couldn't get out because now even if I did try to get out, they going to want property. And by me being so far away from home, who going to do that? So, you know, I'm a man. And, you know, again, I always wanted to take whatever blow they had to hit me on the chin with. I'm willing to take that. So I'm inside now. So a month passed. And this was the first time where they was actually charging somebody a dollar a day to be incarcerated. So every day that you was in jail, they actually charge you a dollar a day to be there. Not just me, everybody. So if your people sent you, let's say $50, they take 30 off the top. So I ain't think that was right. So two months came, three months came, four months came. They never presented me with any evidence for holding me. They didn't have no audio. They didn't have no video. They didn't have nothing, you know, and I can recall the night after like, I, you know, anybody that's been watching the show and watching these episodes, I am a ponderer. And I thought about the night that this happened. I was in the projects. It was raining. I stayed about six or seven miles away and I didn't drive my car. I, I got dropped off. And it was a time where, you know, a lot was going on. You know, that money, it was popping off. So I seen a ride outside. I said, I asked one of my good people, hey, ask them where they give me a ride. And when I went to go get in the car, it was a white guy driving. He had on some sunglasses and it was raining. I'm talking about hard down raining. And I'm wondering, like, why this dude sitting up in here with some sunglasses on? So the passenger was like, where you trying to go? I say, huh, here go $20, man. You could give it to your homeboy and y'all drop me off. The next day, they arrested me. So I knew it had to be something with that because I never was the type to go to no cars or none of that type of stuff. So I figured out what it was and I started complaining about that. But anyway, back to being inside the jail. These people were smoking cigarettes. I don't smoke. You know, when men or whoever's incarcerated, you got people doing certain things in the shower that, you know, I won't speak on or whatever. And I refuse to clean that up behind people. I refuse to clean the toilets. And I had to walk around with a shirt over my face because the cigarette smoke was just ridiculous. So when it got to my time for me to clean up the actual place, I told them I wasn't cleaning up nothing. So they put me in confinement. That's 10 days, they let me sit up there, no problem. Then I come back, they ask me to do it again. They put me up there for 20 days this time. You know, solitary confinement. Then I come back again, they, so it's done been about five months done passed. They still ain't got no evidence on me. So I tapped into what I'm good at now. I just didn't know it then. I sat down and penned a letter to the Florida governor. I sat down and pent the legal letter to the Florida governor. When you mail out like any, like any type of legal mail like that, it's actually, they can't read it. They can't unseal it. So the governor 
or somebody from the governor's office wrote me back, I got the cigarettes smoking to stop. I got the, uh, the, the, the jail to be painted. I got memorandums put up on the wall. And plus, I got them to do away with the dollar a day thing at the time. Because if you deal five or six months or whatever, they taking your money. And that, that wasn't right. I don't think that was right. And it wasn't right. It was unconstitutional. So let's fast forward to me going to court. Uh, again, they never let me saw what they had me accused of. So nine months done went by and I went to court and told then I told the public defender guy that they had represent me, had represent me, look, I'm gonna speak to the judge. No, nah, no, nah, you don't need to talk to the judge. I say, man, I'm talking to the judge, man. Man, when I get up there, I'm talking to the judge. I done been here nine months. Y'all ain't showing me nothing, man. So I got up and stood up and talked to the judge. I told the judge exactly what I'm finna say now, and I remember it. I say, Your Honor, I've been in here nine months, and there's other guys in here that done been in here the, the same time as I have been in here or more, and we ain't seen no evidence of these people holding us, and plus, we're all charged with the same confidentiality in, in, in each case. He say, huh? I say, yes, sir. So he say, recess. He called recess, pulled everybody out, took us back down to the, to the bus. After recess, we came back up. Boom. He say, give everybody got different, different attorneys. So the guy was like, you did a good job. This is what the public defender telling me I did a good job. I know it. I'm going to talk up. So when I get back over to the jail, I get summoned. They called me out of the cell. They handcuffed me, shackled me. And I'm taking these little teeny weeny steps. You know, you can't hardly move when you got all these these, these leg irons on or whatever. The, 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 the sheriff, he summoned me in his office. And I'm sitting there. He said, hey, how you doing? I heard so much about you. Blah, blah, blah. You could be this. You could be that. You're a very intelligent guy. You keep writing the jail up and the governor, and I'm starting to get some legal people to come looking into what you complaining about. Excuse me. He say, I'm going to go and talk to the state's attorney to see can we get this thing resolved. But one thing I need you to do, whenever this over, I need you to get out of this town. And I need you to know that you got a lot of enemies in this town. I got You got a lot of people calling in regards to your freedom always being on, 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 on the chopping block. Like this is a monumental thing for us to get you out of the community. So you need to do something better with yourself or whatever. And they ended up calling the state's attorney and they worked some magic out or whatever. And that situation got handled. So I ended up getting all that taken care of and it showed me the power of the pen. And I learned that. And I'm going to take that to my grave that whoever said it in ancient times, they was right on, on, on time when they said it. It was right on, on cue when they said it. The pen is mightier than the sword.